In this video, we're going to begin investigating how the placement of various constants within our expressions can affect the asymptotic complexity of those recurrence relations. In particular, we're going to investigate how the placement or the number of recursive calls can affect our complexity. So let's look at the first example I have here. Our additional cost is cn squared for all of them. And then we have a different number of recursive calls. Let's investigate this using a recursion tree to see how that will work here. So for the first example, we have t of n gives us cn squared work. It splits into two branches that are t of n over 2 and t of n over 2. Plugging in n over 2 into my additional work there, I have c n over 2 squared and c n over 2 squared. Both of those create two new processes that are a half as big, so t of n over 4. Each of those has c n over 4 squared work. This repeats until we eventually terminate. And all of these recursive calls are the same size. So the height of the tree and the length of the path to the nearest leaf from the root are going to be the same. So that will be convenient when we need to define those. Let's find the cost at each level. The cost at the first level is cn squared. The cost at the next level, I have two copies of cn squared over 4. For the next, we have four copies of c n squared over 16. Let's do some simplification for our second or our first and second levels. Well, this is c n squared over 2, c n squared over 4. I'm going to rewrite that 4, though, as 2 squared. Why would I do that? Well, this is the zeroth level, this is the first level, and this is the second level. So, getting the level to appear in these, this is over 2 to the 0, is very convenient. So my pattern appears to be that at the ith level, I have n over 2 to the i for my cost. So I'm going to write that down. At the ith level, the cost is cn squared over 2 to the i. We also need to determine the height, which we can compute by finding how many times do we need to make these recursive calls to terminate. Well, each recursive call reduces the size by a half, so we need to solve n over 2 to the h is equal to 1. Solving that for h, and we have h equals log base 2 of n. So the total cost for this algorithm, t of n, is equal to the sum of the costs at each level of the cost at each level. So we're going to add up the cost from the zeroth level all the way up until the last level of this and that should give us our total runtime. This is a decreasing geometric series. Maybe it'll be easier to see that once we factor out the cn squared, where there's a sum from i equals 0 to h of 1 over 2 to the i. We've seen this several times by now in our analysis of for loops and while loops, so we should be comfortable with bounding this, so let's do that. It is less than or equal to cn squared times the sum from i equals 0 to infinity of 1 half to the i, which we've seen that exact summation like three times by now. That adds up to the number 2, so this is 2 cn squared. And for bounding it below, it's nice and easy. It's greater than or equal to cn squared. So t of n is in theta of n squared. It is bounded above by 2cn squared and bounded below by cn squared. For our next example, we're doing the same thing as before, but this time we're making four recursive calls. Rather than use a recursion tree, let's see how this works with substitution, just to get us more practice with it. 
So t of n is equal to cn squared plus 4. Let's make our substitution. Plug in n over 2 to everything. So c n over 2 squared plus 4 t of n over 2 over 2, which is n over 2 squared. This is cn squared plus distribute the 4. And we have 4cn squared over 4, which I could write as just cn squared, plus distribute the 4, and we have 4 squared t of n over 2 squared. Make another substitution. We have cn squared plus cn squared plus 4 squared times quantity c n over 4 squared plus 4 t of n over 2 cubed. I did something kind of funky here. I wrote that 2 squared I should have plugged into my additional cost as 4, because I see that I might get some nice cancellation happening. This equals cn squared plus cn squared plus 4 squared times cn squared over 4 squared. That's just another cn squared plus 4 cubed t of n over 2 cubed. If we look at any nice patterns here, in the bottom thing we have 3 cn squareds, 4 cubed and 2 cubed. That looks promising. In our middle level of our substitution, we have 2 cn squareds, 4 squared and 2 squared. And in our original, we have 1 cn squared and 4 to the 1 and 2 to the 1. So my pattern here is t of n is equal to k copies of cn squared plus 4 to the k t of n over 2 to the k. I need to solve for k. Do, to do that we do n over 2 to the k is equal to 1. Solve that and we get k equals log base 2 of n. Bringing all of it together we have t of n is equal to log base 2 of n times cn squared plus 4 to the log base 2 of n. times t of 1. t of 1 is just c, so I'm going to kill two birds with one stone and do that automatically. I'm going to reorder something here but not do anything, so I'm going to write this as cn squared log base 2 of n. There's a nice algebra property that we can use on that second term, the 4 to the log base 2 of n, to try and understand what's happening. I can write that as n to the log base 2 of 4. I can swap the base of the exponential and the thing inside of the log, and those are equivalent. Then I still have that c hanging around. So t of n equals cn squared log base 2 of n plus n to the log base 2 of 4. That's just n squared times c. With all of that in mind, this recursive function would be in theta of n squared log of n. Our last example we're also going to solve with substitution, but for a very practical reason, which is here we're making eight recursive calls. That means that on our second level of our recursion tree we would have 64 different nodes, and I do not want to draw that. So substitution is really the only way to go forward with this. So let's do that. If we do one substitution, we get cn squared plus 8. Perform our substitution, we have c n over 2 quantity squared plus 8 t of n over 2 squared. So t of n equals cn squared plus 8 cn squared over 4 plus 8 squared t of n over 2 squared. My 8cn squared over 4 there simplifies to just 2cn squared. So t of n equals cn squared plus 2cn squared plus 8 squared. Perform another substitution and we get c n over 2 squared squared plus 8 t of n over 2 cubed. So t of n equals cn squared plus 2cn squared plus 64 
cn squared over 16 plus 8 cubed t of n over 2 cubed. 64cn squared over 16 gives me 4cn squared. Just like we saw in our previous one, we have three terms and cubes, we have two terms and squareds, one term and to the firsts. So my pattern is t of n equals cn squared plus 2cn squared plus all the way up until we get to 2 to the k minus 1 cn squared plus 8 to the k t of n over 2 to the k. Let's find out how long that takes to terminate. So we need to solve n over 2 to the k equals 1. So k equals log base 2 of n. Using that, we have t of n equals cn squared plus 2cn squared plus all the way up until 2 to the log base 2 of n minus 1 cn squared plus 8 to the log base 2 of n times t of 1. That's our base case of c. Now let's note some little simplifications. This term here in particular, I can do right as 2 to the log base 2 of n times 2 to the minus 1, which is just n times 1 half for that term there, which will be convenient for some further simplifications. And this term here is the same as n to the log base 2 of 8, which is n cubed. With all of that in mind, let's write this as t of n equals cn squared plus 2cn squared plus that is 1 half n times cn squared plus cn cubed. So t of n equals cn squared plus 2cn squared plus all the way up until 1 half cn cubed plus cn cubed. To analyze this, let's do what we've done several times with geometric progressions. We're going to switch the order. cn cubed plus 1 half cn cubed plus I bet before that we got 1 fourth cn cubed plus all the way down until 2 cn squared plus cn squared. Factor out the dominant power. We have 1 plus a half plus a fourth plus all the way down until we get to, and this is a little funny looking, 2 over n and 1 over n. This is a geometric summation. We can bound it above by a geometric series as 1 plus a half plus infinite. That's, as we've seen several times, that evaluates to 2 cn cubed. We can bound it below by dropping every term but the first. So t of n is in theta of n cubed, which is again different than our previous example. Having performed our various analyses, we can now compare the results and try and investigate why did these things happen. Our first example, the cost of the recursion after each level of the recursive tree reduced. We went from cn squared to cn squared over 2 to cn squared over 4 and did that until eventually it terminated. For our second example, the cost was always the same. It was cn squared for each recursive call. It did not decrease, it did not increase. For our next example, the cost always increased. We went from cn squared to 2cn squared to 4cn squared. So the non-recursive work at each level was increasing. So, with that in mind, we see that when it was decreasing, the total runtime was just the cost of the non-recursive work at the first level. 
So for this first example, we get a nice pairing between the runtime and the additional cost. When the non-recursive work was the same at each level, it, the runtime was the same, but multiplied by log of n. And when the, the non-recursive work was increasing at each level, we got n times the non-recursive work, n times n squared, so n cubed. This is a generic pattern that can be written out much more formally as the master theorem, referring to what happens to the non-recursive work as you descend the recursion tree. If it decreases, then your complexity should be the same as the non-recursive work. If it remains the same, it will be the non-recursive work times log of n, and if it increases, it will be the non-recursive work times n.